Oh, and by the way, let me let me explain one other thing that when you're in a break situation uh, in an exchange and you have to eliminate attack factors, uh, morale is going to boost attack factors, but that's only for combat. In an exchange, you're looking at the rating on the counter itself, not for the terrain. So if there was an exchange and the defender wa that defender has an attack rating of three and he's in a woods, then you're still going to only count three attack factors when it turns out... Uh, when it comes to you eliminating your, your attacker's attack factors. Okay, so the Allies move up here into Hex 702, and tell you what, counter charge, probably not a good idea, so we'll go ahead and back the cavalry up here, and that will end the combat phase for the Allies. So that is the end of the first, uh, toward the end of here, the first day of Waterloo. So the game turn marker moves into the night turn, and we've got some reinforcements that are going to be coming on. There's going to be a uh, an Anglo unit and a Prussian unit that are going to be coming on. They're going to come on from any lock hex. Now, the Prussians have an interesting choice. Actually, they don't. It's going to be over here. I was looking at their lock. It's not their... Uh, this, they can't bring reinforcements onto hex 412. It's going to have to be on the southeast side of the map. Okay, so... Or actually, northeast side of the map. Sorry, the map is oriented, not north-south. Okay, during a night turn, there's a couple of conditions that apply that you need to know about. First of all, no unit has a zone of control during night. So, uh, you can, if you're engaged with somebody, you can back off and disengage. Um, you can move up next to somebody, but you're not going to be doing any combat, so it doesn't do you a whole lot of good, and it doesn't freeze up the other player. So, not a whole lot's going to happen there. Furthermore, your movement rating is decreased by uh, decreased down to one. So it doesn't matter what your printed movement rating is, you have only one during night. And that can be increased by force march and or uh, moving along a road. So what we're going to go ahead and do here with the French is uh, move the cavalry here one and one. The road is a great way to move at night, so we're going to go ahead and move these guys up to Catabra like this. And then the guard is going to move up the road like so, along with 4th Corps up the road like so. And that's pretty much all we're going to do, I think. Maybe move this guy here. Nah, we'll just leave him. We'll leave him right here. Keep a line. Keep everybody in a line. And that's it for movement. There's no combat at night. The next thing we're going to look is at the play aid, you'll see there's a bunch of night operations. First thing we do during night is rally. Now to rally, we have to use the rally table. And there's basically a 33% um, chance that you're going to be eliminated, a 33% chance that nothing will happen, and a 33% chance that you'll actually rally the broken unit. Now the French have two broken units. You can spend a morale point if you like. If you do a, if, spend a morale point, you get plus one to your rally die rolls. We have two broken units as the French, but we're down uh, one morale point already, so we can't afford to spend that morale at this point. So we're going to go ahead and dice without it, even though we have two broken units. So we're going to roll for these guys, and we'll start with the cavalry, and then the second die roll will be for the third corps infantry. And three is no result. Now, if, there's no, if you roll a no result, there's an optional rule that you can instead bring on a cadre. So what a cadre is, is it's one of these guys. This guy right here. This is a cadre. The guy I've just moved around the map here. Since there's a 4th Corps Cavalry unit, is only has a strength of 1, it doesn't really hurt um, to go ahead and, and just eliminate him permanently and bring on a cadre. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and put the 4th Corps Cav in the eliminated units box. And the cadre has to be brought in on a line of control hex, line of communications hex, give me a lock, or it can be brought in on a city, a town hex, that is closer to a lock than the closest enemy unit is to your own lock. So I could not stick him in Waterloo uh, or any of these, these, you know, he couldn't suddenly pop up behind enemy lines. Although sometimes in uh, some of the more fluid maps, like Yenna 20, uh, unusual circumstances can apply. You could have, you know, these routed boys appearing in unexpected places due to the unusual situation. In this case, that's not going to happen. Uh, he has to be at least four hexes from an enemy unit. 
we're going to go ahead and pop this guy um, right back here, I guess, is the best place to put him for now. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and try to rally the other guy. Die roll is a four. We just missed it. Now he's got an attack strength of two. But if we don't try to rally him now, we won't be able to do it again until turn eight. And we might need the extra body. But I'm going to go ahead and ride it out. Let's just go ahead and leave him where he's at. That's going to be it. Oh, Steve caught me. Can't cadre <laughs> cavalry. <laughs> Infantry only. Okay. Forgot about that. I was thinking I got away with one there. All right, so scratch that on the cadre. Well, I guess in that case, we'll go ahead and cadre the infantry boy and um, leave our, our cavalry in the uh, broken units box. So let's do it like that. Got it backwards. I was thinking I uh, thought I found a loophole for a second there, Steve. And there, and Steve says there are there are cards in the um, in the deck there in the random events that could allow you a, uh, a rally opportunity at some point. Okay, so that's it for our rallies. And uh, looking at the play aid here, we do our rallies now. Morale lost due to captured terrain. We're going to lose another morale point because the Allies are in Catebra. So French morale dips again. And now we have morale recovery from rest. So during a night turn, you're always going to gain one morale. So our morale comes up one. That's an automatic thing happens during every night turn. Now, let me say this. During the second day of a battle, never during the first day, but during the second day of a battle, you can declare a lull turn. And what this does is if you have no um, combat instances during your game turn, in other words, you did not attack, and there was no combat during the enemy uh, reaction phase, then you may gain one morale if you have less than six or if your enemy has more morale than you. So that's a way that you can gain some morale by just kind of gathering your, your forces, just holding off of combat uh, for a turn. So next turn, um, oh yeah, and you cannot, you cannot do force marching during a lull. So that's something that we can think about to get French morale up here during the, the upcoming day. So moving on to the Allied player turn. We're going to pull another random event card. And it is March to the Guns, which is not going to have any effect on us. And now the question is, does the First Corps want to remain in Catebra, or we want to skedaddle back a hex? Because there's a good chance they'll be surrounded here in Catebra uh, for the next turn. I'm thinking it might not be a bad idea just to go ahead and back them up one, two, and slightly disengage. Then we have a reinforcement that's coming on. He's going to go one, two, and we can take the infantry, the reserve corps here that's in the woods. We don't want them too hung out to dry, but I think think it would be a good idea just to go one and two like so, stay in contact with first core as we fall back a little slowly. If you stay too far forward, you get locked in a zone of control and you're just going to get mauled. So we're just going to re slowly retreat because we have reinforcements that are coming and uh, we have good defensive terrain behind us. So we're going to go ahead and just back them up. French, uh, or excuse me, the Prussian uh, fourth core, is that the fourth? Second core. Sorry, I'm zoomed way out. He's going to back up one hex two. The other guy in Mont Saint Guibert is going to stay there, and that's it. No comment. Night turns. We're going to go ahead and rally. We have the opportunity to rally the, the uh, broken boy, and that's a good broken boy to rally. Um, looking at the play aid, tell you what, just for grins, I'm going to go ahead and spend the morale point and get a plus one here, so we can't get that Prussian guy on. So we got a plus one to our rally roll here. <laughs> we roll a one. <laughs> so not only did the spendinger of the morale point not help at all, but because it's a one, even with the plus one for the morale point spent, is elimination. So he is dead. He is dead, dead, dead. He is absolutely dead and no cadre opportunities. <laughs> all right. Well, that... Um, that failed bad, so that you can see how things kind of evened off here for the, the Prussians who are kind of sailing high with their morale. Now the morale is sagging. The reinforcements that they were expecting did not arrive.
Oh, speaking of reinforcements that didn't arrive, I forgot to bring on these uh, these boys here. I forgot about the uh, fourth corps. They should have entered during the movement phase. We'll just stick them here in hex eighteen twelve. That's as far as they could go, anyway. So, all right. Well, that that was an unfortunate happenstance. So, um, morale lost to to captured train. There's none. Morale recovery from rest. They're going to get that one that they lost back. But had they not spent it, they would have been at seven. So that was unfortunate. And reconcealment. I, I should have mentioned this. There are optional rules for fog of war, which absolutely rock. When you're playing with two players and you want to play a fun game, use the fog of war option, and it adds just a lot of neat flavor to a game, uh, especially games where there's a lot of maneuver in play, like Yenna 20. Um, a new one I got, Cuts Back 20, is really great with Fog of War. And uh, I'm just going to say something about a product that I really like is the Ardox uh, Counter Sled. Uh, just do a search for Counter Sleds on Google. And there's a guy, I believe he's in Texas, he makes these wooden counter sleds. And yeah, I think you got to get the uh, three quarter inch size ones. But um, they're little sleds that basically turn these into blocks. So it's, it becomes kind of like a block game. And because there's no stacking, it works absolutely perfect. These things hold the counters upright and concealed from your opponent. And it's a great way to play if you're going to use the Fog of War rules. During night turns is when you would reconceal your boys and put new dummy units down and to confuse your opponent. So that is the end of the night turn. And after night turns are done, you're going to reshuffle all of the events. So if we had any events in the discard pile, we would uh, reshuffle them at this time. And move on to the next day. And next day is going to get a little more interesting. Again, there's another reinforcement coming out. I'll just put him up here so I can remember that he's going to be coming on board. French turn comes up. Random event is Vive la France. You may immediately attempt to rally French units. Hey, how about that? So let's go ahead and take a stab at rallying the uh, cavalry there. Die rolls a four. Failed again. So, well, that's unfortunate. Had another opportunity and just missed it. I think the die roll is broken in this vassal module. Okay, so movement. Let's, um, one, two, three. You know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Um, one, two, one, two, fourth core, sixth core, one, two, three. I don't have enough movement points to get done exactly what I wanted to do. And I'll move the cavalry up here into the woods. He's got to stop. I wish I could have gotten the cavalry up uh, to do a soak off attack, but I can't. There's not enough movement points and too many zocks. Uh, the cavalry is going to kind of move up, bringing up the rear there. Uh, we'll bring up the guard into Katabra. And bring these guys in behind. We've got kind of a crowd there, but hopefully this will work okay. And we're just going to keep screening these Prussians with our infantry. We're throwing basically everything at the Allies right now and only screening the Prussians. And I want to make sure I keep a screen of zones of control around these guys. That's it. Combat's real simple. He's attacking him. These two are ganging up on the, the uh, Allies there. And so the first one is going to be an even Steven attack. You know what? Let's go ahead and do the, the bigger attack. Six to four, plus one for the defense in the town. So it's six to five, or a plus one. So do the French want to spend morale? Absolutely not. Do the Allies want to spend morale? Well, here's an interesting thing. Look at the combat results table. On the plus one column, look at what could happen to you as the defender. Um... There's a one in, one in six chance you'll be routed. There is a one in six chance that the attacker will have to, to retreat one hex. That's the AW result. Um, three of the results will be a defender has to retreat one hex. And one result, one in six chance, means nothing happens at all. Now, if you spend a morale point, now you're down to the zero column. There's a one in six chance the attacker could retreat. But there's still a one in six chance that you'll have the route re results. So... Is it worth spending your morale point at this at this stage to take a one in six chance to inflict that on the attacker? 